The porch is an American architectural classic. Large or small, the porch provides a special place to relax and enjoy the breezes, admire the view, or serve as a convenient shelter for outdoor gatherings. Today's home designs incorporate the porch as a natural extension of the family's living space. Just like the rest of the house, building the porch properly will assure generations of outdoor enjoyment. This program will demonstrate the key elements for building a porch using pressure treated southern pine materials. We will cover selecting treated southern pine materials for the job, the pressure treating process, some basic porch design considerations for controlling moisture, framing the porch, selecting treated southern pine porch flooring, installing the flooring, railings, and finally, how to finish and properly take care of a new porch. Throughout the program, you'll notice some helpful design and construction tips, and we'll refer to the information in this helpful brochure, A Guide to Southern Pine Porch Flooring, available from the Southern Pine Council. So let's get started. First, select the best material for the job. Properly installed and maintained, pressure-treated southern pine lumber products are the ideal choice for all wood components of your new porch. Available in a wide range of sizes and grades, treated southern pine materials offer superior protection against the effects of moisture, decay, and termite attack. The waterborne preservative is odorless and paintable too. Pressure-treated southern pine is the product of a carefully monitored and controlled process. The waterborne preservatives are forced into the wood's cells within a closed cylinder while under pressure. A chemical reaction combines the preservative and wood fiber to form a virtually insoluble compound. The unique cellular structure of southern pine permits deep, uniform penetration of the preservative, rendering the wood useless as a food source for fungi, termites, and microorganisms. With a waterborne preservative, water is a part of the pressure treatment process, greatly increasing the moisture content of the wood, often to a level of 50% and higher. Redrying the material will return each piece to a workable moisture content, generally to 19% or less, enhancing the material's dimensional stability and reducing its tendency to warp, twist, and cup. For porch construction, especially the flooring, the specification of material that has been kiln-dried after treatment, or KDAT, is highly recommended. Your treated southern pine porch materials should arrive with either an ink stamp or a plastic end tag showing that each piece has been properly treated according to industry standards. Most building codes require that wood in close proximity to the ground be pressure treated to specific preservative retention levels according to standards of the American Wood Preservers Association or AWPA. Generally, a preservative retention of 0.25 is specified for above ground applications, such as porch framing, while a retention of 0.40 is required for wood in direct contact with the soil, such as posts and columns. Remember, wood is hygroscopic. It will absorb or expel moisture, changing and balancing to match its general surroundings. The pressure treatment of wood does not prevent the normal passage of moisture in and out of lumber. KDAT Southern Pine flooring will react the same way as untreated flooring when exposed to moisture prior to installation and finishing. Now that we have a basic understanding of the treating process and the effects of moisture, we can understand why tongue and groove flooring is only suitable for a porch whose surface is fully protected by a roof. Porches without complete roof protection are generally constructed in the same manner as outdoor decks, incorporating a surface of either pressure-treated 2x6 lumber or 5 quarter by 6 radius edge decking. This home in New Orleans is more than 100 years old. The owner wants to rebuild the original porch the home had some 40 years ago. Temporary bracing of the second-story deck permits removal of the columns, brick piers, and portions of the concrete slab. Locations are determined for new block piers to support the porch framing. Each pier is topped with a galvanized aluminum termite cap. When building a porch over exposed soil, slope the soil away from the center of the porch to aid the runoff of water that might accumulate. 
To reduce the upward migration of moisture from the ground, cover the soil with a barrier of four mil polyethylene, leaving two feet of exposed soil inside the perimeter of the porch. Use gravel to anchor edges of this barrier. Delivery and on-site storage of the porch materials is one of the most important steps in the construction process. The treated material should be unloaded in a clean, dry place and stacked on stringers to permit air circulation. This shady driveway is an ideal spot. Avoid stacking the material in an area that receives direct sunlight most of the day or in an enclosed heated space. These conditions can allow the lumber to equalize at a moisture content too low for its intended use. Since this area is not protected from rain and excess moisture, the lumber needs to be loosely covered with polyethylene, allowing adequate air circulation within the package. Builders use a variety of framing options for porches. Here, treated southern pine 6x8 timbers have been notched to meet at the corners and the center point of the porch. For porch flooring, joist spacing should not exceed 16 inches on center. 2x10 joists are lifted into place. Notice the overlap at the center support. Also, note the location of the joist closest to the house. Allow a 1 to 2 inch space between this framing member and the house to prevent unwanted moisture collection and to promote air circulation around the entire porch. Once the joists are in place, make sure the framing is square. The entire porch framing is assembled to permit a slope away from the house. Allow one quarter inch for every foot of the porch depth. In this case, a slope of one and a half inches will permit adequate water runoff. Two by 10 blocking between joists will add stability in the porch. Once completed, it's a common practice to allow both the porch framing components and the flooring material to acclimate. Experienced builders allow one to two weeks for the framing materials to reach an equilibrium moisture content with the surrounding conditions prior to installation of the flooring. This practice will reduce potential flooring problems, buckling or separation, if the floor is installed on the framing too soon. Pressure-treated southern pine tongue and groove porch flooring is widely available in nominal widths of four and six inches. The actual size of this four inch material is three and one eighth inch on the face. For thicknesses, standard one by material measures three quarter inch and five quarter material measures a full inch. For appearance considerations, the grade of C and better is most often specified for porch flooring applications. Porch flooring is oriented perpendicular to the house and fastened directly to the joists. Extend the flooring beyond the outer joist and trim to create an overhang of one inch. Where the flooring meets the house, allow an expansion space of at least one half inch for dimensional change. This space can be concealed with trim or in this case, with the home siding. Proper porch flooring installation actually involves applying the finish before installation. Techniques vary. Many builders apply a coat of paintable water repellent sealer followed by a coat of high quality mildew resistant oil based primer. For this porch, oil based exterior porch enamel is applied to the tongue and the groove of each piece as well as to the ends adjacent to the house. With either method, the flooring is installed while the paint is still wet. This procedure not only assures an effective seal against moisture penetration, but it also provides a good bond between floorboards. The first strip of flooring is aligned to be flush with the outer band joist, with the groove facing outward. A three inch strip of flooring is ripped, then secured to the outer edge using four and a half inch galvanized screws. Each piece of flooring is blind nailed at every joist using hot dipped galvanized ring shank nails. Here we're using two inch nails. Next, one by trim boards are positioned around the exterior. A strip of molding adds the finishing touch. Pre-drill holes to avoid splitting the wood. Once the flooring is in place, the first coat of an oil-based porch enamel is applied. Porch floor enamels are available in a wide range of colors. A lattice skirt is a simple, efficient way to enclose the base of the porch, allowing adequate air circulation. Here, the owner prefers a brick veneer 
ornamental vents are spaced at both ends and at front locations to promote air circulation beneath the porch. Installing the columns is the next step. Pressure treated southern pine lumber products are used to box in square braces. A two inch hole is drilled in the center of each brace to allow air circulation through the column's length. Notice the 1 8 inch kerf relief to reduce cupping. Remember, safe construction practices include wearing eye protection and a dust mask when sawing or machining treated or untreated wood. Columns are not installed in direct contact with the flooring. Instead, each column rests atop galvanized spacer blocks positioned at each corner. The column is lifted into place, aligned with an opening in the roof soffit. A sturdy railing completes the porch. Locate railings to meet local building codes. Generally, balusters must be spaced no more than 6 inches on center. A railing height of 36 to 38 inches is typical. Both the bottom and top rails should be securely attached to the columns. Trim around the base of each column leaves a small gap to permit air circulation. The result of a well-designed, properly built porch. Adequate air circulation is provided throughout the structure, beneath the framing, between the house and the porch, and through the columns. There's also no moisture buildup at the base of columns. There is a free flow of air through the entire member. A second coat on all exposed wood surfaces provides optimum protection from the elements. The new porch is ready for years of service, and some simple maintenance will help keep the new porch in top condition. Inspect the porch regularly for water accumulation or for any raised fasteners. Correct problems as soon as possible. Refinishing the flooring can be expected about every five years, depending upon weather conditions and the amount of exposure to direct sunlight. Enjoy your new porch. You've added distinction, comfort, and value to your home. And pressure-treated southern pine will assure this porch a long service life. This helpful information is available from the Southern Pine Council, plus this informative booklet all about pressure-treated southern pine.